When I was, um, I think, seven years old, in rural Ohio, on a farm, I marched into the kitchen wearing nothing but a pair of shorts, which isn't interesting, except it makes me look more like I lived there, and announced to my parents I was going to grow up, move to New York City, and be an artist. And to this day, I'll never forget the look on their face. New York City was, you may as well move to Jupiter. They just didn't know where I got this idea. But I got the idea from my grandmother, who had an amazing collection of art books that I escaped my dad's endless chores <laughs> by perusing endlessly. And I was so inspired. Thomas Hart Benton was one of my big heroes when I was a little kid. Uh, George Bellows from Ohio, Whistler, on and on and on. I had so many. Anything I could see that was a painting was a big deal to me, and that's what I decided I wanted to do. So that's really how I got started. Wasn't exactly a straight line from there to here, but, but you know, that's what life does, zigzags, and you end up somewhere, hopefully where you want to go. My inspirations as an artist, wow, uh, probably a big question. Um, lots of people think of me as an architectural artist. That's not unfair, but I don't, think it's, I don't think it's a full look at what I do. I'm very interested in buildings and architecture, but not as objects, more as context. I like the urban context. The painting I did earlier today was about buildings, but it wasn't really about buildings. It was about the light that informs buildings. So uh, urbanity is really a big um, inspiration for me. But um, as far as other influences, there are many. I mean, I could use the cliche of light, but it isn't really a cliche. I mean, I study it, have always since I was a little kid, uh, how light refracts, reflects, bounces, shines, the luminosity of shadows. I can't really explain it except that it was uh, and continues to be just something that makes my heart jump every time I look at the sky, every time I look at the night sky, any kind of light condition indoors, outdoors, anything to do with light on water, um, fog. Um, it's the biggest influence I have so that's nature. You know, nature is the best teacher, they often say, and that's true. Much as anybody might like urbanity, nature still rules. I have lots of other influences that have nothing to do with art. I can name a million artists that have influenced me, but music uh, is massive. I won't go down that road too far, except to say that I don't know that I could paint without it. It informs how I paint, what I paint, the way I go about what I do every day. Um, I study human interaction, the uh, perceptions of people, how they behave, how they interact. That's a huge influence. And that probably ties into my other major influence, which is literature, books, um, stories, storytelling. If pressed, I would say I call myself an artist, which I didn't used to do. I was afraid of that word. I didn't like that word. I thought it was too pretentious. I don't anymore. I don't think being an artist makes you a better person or a higher or more elevated person. It's just who you are. And I finally figured out that uh, I didn't really choose to be an artist. It chose me. So that took me a while to figure out, but I did. And thank God, I did. But. Uh, yeah, stories. Um, I think of myself as a person who tells stories in paint, the same way an author would in a short story, an essay, a novel, the same way a composer in music would do in a piece of music. Uh, they're all connected to me. They're all, it's all uh, the creative process. I tell my groups, I teach a lot, do not paint the scene that you see Paint the story that that scene tells you. Rather, paint the inspiration of the scene that you're looking at. 
paint how you feel. That sounds like words to some people, but to, to others, it, it turns a light on in them somewhere. It's, a, uh, it's an electrical current from their visual perception to their, to their soul, I believe. It is to me. Um, and, and by storytelling, I don't necessarily mean this has to be some deep biblical allegory or some high-minded uh, prophecy. It could be a very humble little story. It could be just uh, a person walking on a beach or on a city street. And the way you paint that could tell volumes about who you are as a person. But moreover, if you're a successful artist, or rather, if I feel I'm a successful artist, it draws the viewer in. It draws him or her into my painting. And rather than listening to my story, it gets uh, my viewers to tell their own stories. And when that happens, then I feel like I've done my job because that's, that's what I want. I want to involve as many people as I can in my creative process. So the process is storytelling for me. It's a lot of painting is intuitive. There's planning that goes into it, but a lot of mistakes happen. I think maybe especially in watercolor, and you have to roll with those. And it's how you roll with those punches, how you roll with those mistakes that uh, will determine how successful you are as an artist or not. And by successful, I don't necessarily mean wealthy, be nice, but uh, I mean how well you've told the story you want to tell and how successfully that draws the viewer in to begin to tell their own stories. If an artist paints a painting of a bridge, he or she has already told a story because a viewer can imagine themselves inside that painting traveling from point A to point B. So then in a more you know, metaphoric, symbolic way, it represents to me transitions in life, changing from one age to another, moving from one city to another, uh, relationship to another, one state of being, one way of living to another. A bridge to me is just freighted with all sorts of um, information about transition, about change that I um, can be very sad, but can also be extremely gleeful and joyful and very happy. There's a wide range of emotions a bridge can tell. They can be very uplifting. They can be a little bit uh, bittersweet. They can be downright sad. But a bridge always, to me, is, uh, is a metaphor, a symbol for change for transition. If you work in any kind of representational way, even semi-representational, then you have to start representing perspective. I do that with the typical lines of perspective, sure, but I also set up layers of value, which I hope lead a viewer deep into the painting, which then establishes the third dimension of depth. A bridge introduces one other level, one other layer, and that layer is uh, time, which I refer to as the fourth dimension, the passage of time. Um, that can be so poignant and so powerful in a painting if done sensitively um, that you get a lot of dimensionality in a painting just by painting a bridge. Um, I have hundreds of bridge paintings from the simplest little stone bridges in Japan that step across a, a little stream, you know, to grand structures like the Brooklyn Bridge or they're all the same to me. They're all about that. They're all about transition and the passage of time. So I just find that an endless source of inspiration. I expect I always will. Mm -hmm.